Good morning. Let's begin the day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ever loving God, we thank and praise you. Thank you, Lord, for creating us, sustaining us, and protecting us. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord. For all those things that you have given to us in order to survive in our lives. As we thank you, Lord, we place ourselves before you. Look into our lives, Lord. Look into our hearts. Forgive all our shortcomings, Lord. Enable us, Lord, to experience your mercy, your compassion. Lord, we pray in a special way to give us the grace to know you, to understand you, and to imitate you in our lives. Lord, often we claim that we know you, but we don't truly really experience you in our hearts. Give us the grace, Lord, so that we may truly accept you. And by accepting you, we may commit ourselves to you. Lord, you want us to proclaim your good news to all creation. Enable us, Lord, and strengthen us. Give us the grace to understand you. Understand your Paschal mystery. And to remain more close to you. Be with us. Help us. Mary, our Blessed Mother, intercede for us. Saints and angels, pray for us. so that we may continue to experience your presence in our lives. And as we experience your presence in our life, Lord, enable us that we may not become selfish, but outgoing. Be with us. Strengthen us, protect us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let's listen to the Gospel of the day, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 7 to 14. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father, and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip? said Jesus to him. And you still do not know me. To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask for in my name, I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask for 
anything in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, a very good morning to all of you. Today, we heard the conversation between Jesus and Philip, answering Philip's request. At last, Jesus explains. Jesus explains the unity and oneness of the three persons of the Holy Trinity. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus clarifies the abiding presence of each person of the Holy Trinity in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit as Jesus is a visible expression of the invisible God. So, we see, Jesus is presented as the invisible, the visible expression of the invisible God. In order to see what God looks like, we have only to look at Jesus. And in order to hear how God speaks, we have only to listen to Jesus. In Jesus, we see the perfect love of God. A God who cares intensely and who earns for all men and women, loving them to the point of laying down his life for them on the cross. Jesus makes visible a God who loves us unconditionally and selfish, selfishly and perfectly. So, by explaining the unity that exists in the Trinity, Jesus is explaining to us God the Father. Uh, he says, all that I say is the Father who says, the Father lives in me. I and the Father are the one. So it talks about, talks about our faith, the mystery of our faith, one God and three persons, and the unity that exists within. So Jesus as a visible sign before us of the Father, what the Father looks like. We can, looking at Jesus, experiencing Jesus, we know who the Father is. The point is to be united with Jesus. That is to say, we are united with our Heavenly Father. So what the Heavenly Father looks like, what is his nature, we get it from Jesus, his own life. So to see what God looks like, you need to look at to Jesus. And in order to hear what God is talking to us, speaking to us, we need to listen to Jesus. And Jesus is the, in Jesus we see the perfect love of God. In fact, the love of God is manifested through Jesus Christ. So we talk about the love of the Father, the the mercy of God, the compassion of God, etc., etc. And how to understand this, how to experience that, we experience through Jesus. The very sacrificial service Jesus rendered for the humanity, the unconditional love with which Jesus took up this mission, who humbled himself, took up the form of a slave for our sake, speaks the love of God. He is not just a representative. He is not just a representative, just came to represent God the Father. But he really, through the very, his own very life, taught us what 
the God, what God the Father and what is His love for us. Is a readiness to sacrifice that uh, the other day we were talking about uh, we are called to be uh, to serve sacrificially a sacrificial service, humble and the sacrificial service. And that's what we see the humility with which he, he Jesus accepted to be a human being. From the stature of a God to come to the level of a human beings, our own level. That's the humility. Now, for example, to understand that one, look at uh, maybe sometimes the power or the position that we enjoy in our company or uh, in our uh, um, society. All of a sudden, we are uh, de-promoted. For example, from the company, we are de-promoted. And our juniors are given or made our boss. How it looks? I think uh, many of us, we don't want, we may not prefer to continue in the same organization. We prefer because we say we have been uh, humiliated or we are, we are, um, we are disowned by the company, etc., etc., and then we prefer to look into some other company or may not like to carry on with the, the same company. And that's where, you know, <clears throat> we can really understand from the status of being God to come down to our level that talks about uh, there is no shame there, there is no, you know, uh, the feeling of let down, but joyfully, happily accept this mission. And he identifies himself with us. And Jesus, in the very act of identifying himself with us, his humility, <coughs> his love, is exactly what God the Father is. That is what he is for us. And that's what we are called to experience. The love Jesus had for the humanity, for the sinners, for the crippled, the sick, the suffering, used to go all out to them. The respect he showed, the concern he had, and that's what we see, who is our God. If you ask who is our God for us, this is what the humble, loving, caring, merciful uh, God, merciful person. That is God for us. Who not only created us, but he is making sure that we are growing gracefully we are not just growing but we are growing gracefully we are growing under his guidance and we are united in jesus so if we put our trust in jesus and believe in him jesus promises that god the father will hear our prayers when we pray in Jesus name the greatest assurance given to us Jesus believing in him and in the promises that shared to us by Jesus if you believe that promises will be fulfilled ask anything in his name the father will answer it the assurance from Jesus and he pretty confident He's not just talking about in the air. He's not just talking about here and there. But with conviction, he's telling, you ask anything in my name, it will be granted by my Father. So that confidence. So that confidence that Jesus shared with us, anything you ask in my name, my Father will provide. That is the confidence Jesus is asking us in, to practice in our life, to pray with confidence. And we need to ask ourselves, do we pray with confidence? Or is that just a routine? 
and he assures us that if we pray with confidence the lord will truly provide us matthew uh, 6 9 11 luke 11 to we have the uh, <coughs> passage of the our father where jesus is teaching us to pray to the father with confidence we need to pray and if we pray with confidence the lord is going to uh, fulfill jesus will do it that's the assurance we want to do it's not just a promise it's an assurance the lord is giving us so we believe that god dwells within our souls in the form of the holy spirit making us the temple of god where we have the indwelling presence of the triune god the father son and the holy spirit living hence it's our duty to live always aware of the real presence of god within us and to do adjust our lives accordingly doing good to others and avoiding evil so the very fact through the word of god the lord is assuring us he is residing in us we are the temple of the holy spirit as we are the temple of the holy spirit it's our duty to be convinced of the real presence of god within us and when we are convinced of that real presence within us we need to do good when to do good is to proclaim him doing good to others we are proclaiming a living god to others when we avoid evil we stand firm we stand we wear witness we wear witness to the truth and to bear witness to truth we need to be in jesus we need to be in jesus we need to know him jesus as jesus is telling us who god the father is and the word of god is telling us knowing the to know god is to know jesus and today the question before us is what is of what is our knowledge about jesus do we know jesus we said that jesus reflects god the father his love is mercy is compassion is peace so the challenge of the day challenge of the time is to know jesus how many of us can proudly say i know jesus i have discovered him reflecting about the the gospel of the day it's very important as jesus is talking to us about the unity that exists in the trinity and how he is or in his name how he is going to bless us because of his uh, relationship with the father and the holy spirit we need to draw ourselves to jesus to draw ourselves to jesus to remain in jesus is to know him and often as christians our knowledge about uh, jesus is uh, mostly a head level understanding it's the head level understanding whereas what we need to know how we need to know jesus is something of the heart level because at the uh, as per the uh, head level theoretically and um, academically we know jesus we study we read bible 
Now we say Jesus, uh, <coughs> Son of God, came to this earth. The the whole Christmas play and um, the, the the narration how he was born in uh, Bethlehem in a manger. Then he was presented in the temple. He was lost in the temple. All those things. Then afterwards he. Uh, John the Baptist appears and then he brings or he manifests Jesus to the people. Then he starts his public ministry. He went around, he worked miracles, etc., etc., etc. And finally, he gave up his life on the cross and he was on the third day, he rose again from the sun. Academically or theoretically, we are very good, we have a good knowledge of Jesus. That's very good. Fine. But that knowledge, that head level uh, knowledge, knowing Jesus, has it transformed from the head to our heart? The heart and head, it's all connected, no? At least through the blood that flowing. So, If our understanding of Jesus, the knowledge of Jesus remains at a head level, we, that's why we often remain very indifferent, very cold, very reserved. You know, sometimes we, we start doing, like going to church as if, uh, okay, I have to do it, that's all I'm going. There's no happiness. A kind of indifferent attitude and sometimes when you come to a church also we behave in that same way not ready to accept not ready to accept the neighbor sitting here next to all creating or coming and sitting and uh, chatting over the phone checking through the phones you know not concentrating not praying fulfilling an obligation so we see we can see it's that's that's a kind of a reaction or a uh, the result of that uh, head level uh, knowledge of God in order to fulfill, okay, I'm a Christian, I was baptized. So the church says you have to go for Mass every Sunday, I'm going for Mass. The church says, but Jesus said, do this in memory of me. That part, why we are not. Because it has not gone down to the um, our heart level. Whereas at a heart level, understanding knowledge of Jesus, there's a personal relationship that comes in. It's not just an observances, it's not just a outwardly expressions, but it's an internal transformation. Knowing Jesus is an internal transformation. There's a warmth in me. There's a that uh, the warmth of the love, love of God is there in me. That is very visible in my life. The way I deal with uh, the people around, the way I conduct myself, whether at home or in the church or in my workplace, things like that. There is that a joy, even in midst of sufferings, difficulties, still there is there's a hope, there's a trust, there's a love within. There's an intimacy, intimacy to be with Jesus. That intimacy, that yearning, that desire, desire to uh, offer the Holy Eucharist, be part of the Holy Eucharist, to say our prayers, to meditate on the Word of God, to read the Word of God. That's an intimacy. When I read the Word of God, I feel I'm not just reading it. I am just assimilating. I'm just making it part of my life. Something intimate into me. And uh, that's what the knowledge of uh, Jesus talking about. A heart level knowing of our Lord. It's not my theoretical or uh, the whatever I've read and things like that. But a heart level is what I'm experiencing every moment, every moment of, of 
my life i am experiencing it it's not just i am i have read something about oh i read uh, matthew's gospel is written jesus is merciful compassionate he did that this is one yeah it's uh, the gospel it is written can i say i have experienced that he is working in me at least from the time when we are able to rec- uh, uh, recall our lives from the time when we are able to recall our own life just uh, imagine from that moment till now you know number of uh, blessings that we have received the times we felt the the comforting presence of jesus in our lives there were occasions difficulties problems challenges there were happiness sorrow there was uh, losing people all those things we faced difficulties we faced natural calamities all those things but amidst all these sometimes you will find somebody is supporting me somebody is uh, walking with me somebody is uh, guiding me somebody is protecting me i think that 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 uh, presence that's what the knowledge of jesus jesus walking with me can i recall i need to, i think in our prayer occasionally we need to uh, the, in our meditation we need to be quiet and uh, try to recall our lives the wonders the lord has worked in our lives you just see the magnificat when uh, mary prayed the 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 magnificat she talks about how wonderfully god worked in the lives of the people and let's not go to others lives let's look into our lives what we were 10 years back and what is what we are now in all these uh, circumstances at least the lord is uh, protecting us we have we are going through this pandemic we are having difficult time we are locked downs we cannot move out etc but even it at me in the midst of all this this one we feel yes the lord is there because he is uh, protecting us he is giving us good company of our family he is giving us lots of time to be with our family members to giving us time to pray he is giving us time to uh, uh, recognize him is it not uh, the blessings if he has look at the people who have lost their lives the people who are running here and there looking for treatment people looking for this one but you know when you, when you look at the world around us see how god has protected us so today the lord is calling us to really know him and that knowing him uh we need to transform that head level knowing of jesus to a heart level knowing uh, for example we have been to our schools we were uh, we were into the schools most of us maybe 10 years 20 years 30 years 40 years back even now we remember certain teachers what is the reason it's not the knowledge they communicated to us it is not the formulas they explained to us or shortcuts they explained to us because we may remember them but for some time but we remember many of our teachers because of their uh, character how loving they were how generous they were how outgoing they were the times they have helped us they were concerned sympathized with us had a caring heart for us and these are the qualities that is uh, stands out it's not because of the you know we don't much talk about uh, 
the knowledge of uh, english the person had or the maths the person had or uh, the disciplinarian of course in to a certain extent but even in that what we remember most is a good heart the generosity the gentle behavior the concern the genuine concern the teacher had for us for our well being so that's what uh, always strikes in our memories and that's what we as christians as called by christ we need to have that relationship that understanding of jesus that knowing of jesus not uh, for the sake of studies not the sake of uh, knowledge we need to know him for our lives often we are not uh, successful in our lives or things like that is because we are not able to uh, go beyond the head level understanding of jesus when it's a head level understanding we look for reasons and then uh, it remains as reasons we are very um uh, just as not convinced that's why we need to pray for that blessing we need to pray for the blessings of understanding to experience to recognize the lord remaining in us even in this head level understanding jesus is there remaining in us as someone has told, uh, commented i felt that someone was walking and journeying with me after my husband's death until today i mean that is actually that's a conviction yes if i am convinced if my faith in the lord that he is my master he is my lord he is he will never leave us and that is experience and we can really say even in my life i was uh, you know in 2014 there was a great flood in kashmir and then uh practically almost 5 days the outside world was not knowing whether we were alive or not and we were in that uh, stuck in the water for 9 days ninth day we could uh, walk out almost uh, our uh, you know Six, five, four, five feet of water. We had to walk four, five kilometers to uh, reach somewhere. But all these days, what we felt, there's someone telling us, "Don't worry." We felt a comforting uh, protection, even in midst of all this. And uh, if we really meditate, uh, I mean, reflect about our own life, we can recall those incidents. sometimes when we were fully down we we lost all hope but still there is someone saying someone telling don't worry and that is the result that is what we if we are able to recall we recognize that when we are recognizing christ in our lives and we can keep on uh, you know in a real really experience that in our lives even many of the atheists who later on uh, gave their testimony of their lives that i mean after their conversion they said uh, of course they failed to recognize even those days uh, i mean when they were uh, uh, propagating their uh, theories of atheism and things like that they, they felt there was something beyond their understanding something was happening in them but they never gave in but once they were recognized that uh, the working of the lord they said it was jesus and we need to uh, pray for that grace to recognize that one and knowing jesus we need to uh go beyond this head level understanding if you ask me for anything in my name i will do 157 if you remain in me and do my words in you you may ask whatever and
why are these uh, promises not visible in the life of believers uh because we are i think so much influenced by the world outside we have no time to look into ourselves we are not time to look into the word of god jesus says the the the, the word the, the power the spirit that is remain in us uh, and as anything i uh, in my name my father will give it to you we have no conviction conviction to ask we now know we are not recognizing that uh, yes jesus is there present in me that is a real problem uh it is there in the in the in our lives we don't recognize it is uh, why it is not visible for the believers because we are not committed ourselves we don't want to go deeper into a relationship with jesus because going into a deeper relationship with jesus demands you know lots of sacrifices from us sacrifices for the sake of ourselves and for others for the good of others uh the story of uh, creation you got created the sun on the fourth day of creation are you sure it's on the fourth day of creation where did the source of light came from on the first day i think you have to see the whole uh, the creation i think you should read the uh, the account of creation in the beginning god created heavens and the, and the earth now the earth was a formless void there was darkness over the deep and god's spirit hovered over the water god said let there be light so i think we need to uh understand the the story of creation in a very uh, not in the eyes of uh, our own uh, the physical understanding of the what is the light what is darkness things like that it's a kind of um, you know things put together to to a context so we need to believe we will take it in that sense god as the uh, not as a minute things first day second day third day but we have to take it as a whole okay uh what's the time okay for for you coming back to knowing god knowing jesus to in order to know in order to have that deeper experience of jesus we need to realize recognize that god pursues with us with love and offer salvation we need to be we need to recognize we need to be reminded again and again that god is offering to us offering us calling us constantly with love and offering us salvation john 316 talks about uh, for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life so what is the intention what is the, what god wants from us 
why he wants us to recognize him why we need to know him know jesus it's because we need the lord wants us to experience his love the salvation the eternal life that he is offering is calling us he wants us to be partakers to participate not to be lost so we need to recognize that god is constantly working in us why we need to know jesus is to know is to recognize is constantly working in us loving us and he wants us to be saved in john 10 10 i have come that they may have life and have it to the full it's very uh, encouraging words i have come that they may have life and have it to the full so the life that is given to us the life the faith that we have it is to be lived actively giving glory to god knowing what our call demands and uh, to know jesus we need to recognize that sin separates us from god and others sin is walking our own way in rebellion against god's will when we walk away from god we walk away from life in romans 3:23 everyone has sinned for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god that is and uh, of course the word of god assures us that we are all sinned we are all fall short of the glory of god but the mercy of god is there waiting for us to return sin brings death romans 6:23 for the wages of sin is death but there is a new life if we believe if we repent if we recognize that sin separates us from god and if we recognize the fact god is merciful compassionate then he is calling us to a new life the very sacrament of the reconciliation is the sacrament of new life to put away the sin or to come to a new life our own efforts cannot save us as soon as we try to find life's true meaning in wrong ways and places for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it's a gift of god not by works so that no one can boast ephesians 289 so the faith that's a gift from god and only the faith can save us the grace to accept christ to have him as an integral part of our lives something that is given freely yeah it's there the grace is there uh, do we need to recognize the need to ask for this grace actually we are 
the graces are given to us, but what we are asking, give us the grace to recognize those graces given to us. To understand the graces that God has given to us. And but to understand is to make, to transform ourselves according to the graces given to us. And uh, our prayer also to for ourselves and for others that uh, Lord help us to recognize the blessing, the graces that you have given to us in our lives. Often we don't uh, recognize that this one in our life because we don't, uh, we often depend on our own what is called uh, selfish interests, our own self uh, efforts. So that's the time when we forget that, yes, the the grace of Christ is there. It has not gone, but we are not given. Because so the very fact of the understanding of the freedom, the free will, the freedom to choose, we prefer to choose what is worldly and what is and uh, because uh, often the worldly things doesn't demand anything but the graces grace of god demands a lot from us a change a transformation and sometimes it's very difficult we may have to forgive one another we may have to stop gossiping we may have to stop uh, uh, talking ill about others a lot of things we may have to start helping others. We may have to be concerned about uh, our neighbors, our friends, etc. So, I think uh, what we need to always ask the Lord to give us the grace to recognize Him in our lives is the grace as the, the power to recognize the grace of God, the blessings that he has given to us, the spirit that is dwelling in us. And we are praying for others too. And when we start realizing the, the grace of God, it's telling us, giving us, con consoling us, comforting us. For that, we need to give ourselves. We need to set aside ourselves. Sometimes why people go in for meditation, why we uh, talk about personal prayer. When I am in communion with my Lord, I am able to raise my heart and Jesus will tell you, hey, look at that, look at this. These things, it is, you, what you have done is not good. Or those things, oh my God, helping that person, very nice. You are very, I mean, we can experience such a way that conversation. When you are united, when you are in communion with Jesus in our personal prayer, when I am talking to Jesus, even in, your, in my own room, not necessarily to go to church in the plenary of the blessed sacrament, but even in this room, just looking at uh, maybe the crucifix or the, the picture of uh, the sacred heart and then within seconds you start kind of a conversation mm -hmm. talking to Jesus as you're talking to your friend. And that will uh, help us to, you know, uh, you can hear Jesus telling us what you've done. You, I mean, you can also hear the appreciation, a lot of appreciations you'll be hearing because of good things we have done. And at the same time, there'll be a point or two. Yeah, these are the areas you need to work. Jesus tells, but ultimately who has to do it? We have to do it. I, I mean, if we are prepared for that, I think that's how we make changes in life. Sometimes we say, oh, we feel dry. Now coming for mass is very dry. Or we are going for bees, we are dry. Because what? We are all in that head level, no? We are always in that head level. We are not going down to the heart level. Know his presence, understand him. Make it a habit to talk to Jesus every day like a friend. Even if it is for 10 minutes, 5 minutes. I tell you, if you start with 5 minutes, I tell you, next day you will extend to 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I think that, that's where we are able to recognize the grace of God that is there within us. So we need to know Christ, we need to recognize Him. And uh, 
let's make all efforts to recognize him. We need to recognize that Jesus died for us. His death and resurrection is for our sins, not for him. So look at his dedication, his commitment, his love. He died for us. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 Anyone, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. He gives inner peace. Romans 5 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us freedom. John 8.36 So if the Son of Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. That depends. And He gives us eternal life. Romans 6.23 And to know Jesus, we must repent and ask God for forgiveness. Repentance means to acknowledge our sins. Be sorry for our sins, to confess, willing to forsake, willing to uh, put an end to these habits and to have a life changed by Christ, ready to take that new life, ready to surrender myself to a new life and ready to uh, live the old ways of life. I'm coming into that uh, experience of Christ. Place our trust in Christ and if our trust is in Christ, we'll always recognize Him. Revelation 3.20 talks about, here I am, I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Revelation 3.20 Jesus waiting outside our hearts, knocking at our hearts, asking to open so that he enters. That means we recognize him. He is there waiting us, but we have not opened our doors to him. It's not like we sometimes when you go somewhere and if the door is not open, we go away. But Jesus patiently wait in us. That is the grace of God in us. Understanding the grace of God in us. He is patiently waiting for us to open our lives. Are we ready to open our lives to him? I think that's a... Uh, Thing we need to really uh, reflect about today at this course of this day let us ask the Lord to give us the grace so that we may really know him recognize him in our lives and by recognizing him we uh, live for him that is say we, we are we recognize him and we uh, fulfill or we change our lives so that we become worthy before God and one of the day to how to really, you know, live that, uh, recognize Christ in our lives. Tomorrow, I think, uh, second Sunday of every year in May is the Mother's Day. If I'm not mistaken, it's a Mother's Day. So, so we all uh, make a big celebration, sending messages, that one, sending flowers, all these, and uh, having dinners and all that. Of course, this year. It may be something different, but recognize that really do we take care of our mothers? 
If not, please don't wish them. Don't do it for the sake of, you know, oh, the world is doing, there's a commercialization on uh, Mother's Day because a lot of things to be sold, gifts has to be sold and all those things. It's a, let's ask, we prepare ourselves for the Mother's Day tomorrow. Need to ask ourselves, am I worthy to celebrate this day? Am I worthy to celebrate this day? Do I take care of my mother, my parents, my elders? If not, how can you say? It's a reminder, you know, that recognize the role of mother in our lives. Whatever we are, the sacrifices that they have made. And uh, what we are today is the result of their sacrifices. So it's a time to recognize the tenacious and the sacrificial love the mothers have for their children, for the tremendous impact they have on their children, and for the intimate relationship with us from birth to death. So it's a day to salute, it's a day to thank mothers for their sacrificial love for us. Their tremendous impact that they make in our lives and for their intimate relationship with us from the time of birth to our death. And when we talk about it, we have the example of our blessed mother as a mother to us. The qualities that we see in our blessed mother the gentleness, humility, and we see in our mothers. And often we don't recognize those uh, virtues that are there in our mothers. And as we grow, you know, there is a saying, when we are all small, we say, my mother, my mother, or my father. And as we grow up, when we are settled down, our families and all that, then starts your mother, no more my mother, your mother. So, uh, as we prepare, make a sincere effort to be at peace, to be at the service of our mothers. Don't do it, do anything for the sake of doing it. If you say that uh, Happy Mother's Day, mean it. Yes, really. I'm ready to uh, do any sacrifice, any, I'm ready to face any object or obstacles in taking care of my mother, my parents in a very uh, dignified way. If not, let's not do any, uh, th this one, not be carried away by the world. Let your mother's day come from our heart, not from our words. It should not be from our heads. It has to come from our hearts. Pray for that grace so that we may truly. Uh, I will punish you, Nineveh. Is this why God's anger has befallen the world with? I think uh, Nineveh, when the Ninevites prayed for it, the Lord uh, showed his mercy and compassion. Okay? So, let's not take it in a very literal sense. But it's all, it has got a uh, uh, message. We need to. We should not forget our Creator. We should not create the love of God. We should not forget the mercy of God, the compassion of God. Still, there is time to return to Him. Let's be uh, uh, receptive to the Word of God. The Nineveh, when they heard the preaching of the 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 prophet. They all repented. So it's also a sign. Lord gives us lots of sign. Take it as a sign. It's a time that we need to make personal changes. Now, we sometimes talk about COVID. We start blaming someone. or oh, that one, this one. We say about COVID. We are also part of that. As to a certain extent, in uh, deforming the world, the creation, we also play a role. So it's also a pointer towards us to reflect about our 
uh, role in it. So we also need change. We need transformation. Let's not blame. Let's not pass the blame on anyone else. Let's be all reflect about it. In what ways I can uh, make a difference in my life and the life of others. We need to make a difference in our own life first. Then only we can make the difference in others' life. And if we are not able to make any difference in our life, please don't make any effort to go and make, uh, I mean, uh, influences in others' lives. It becomes just a head level thing. Nothing, no experience, no uh, grace there. So let us pray that we have uh, been blessed by the Lord. Let us know Him, understand Him, and walk with Him. And let us recognize the walking, the, the Lord who is walking with us, the power of God remaining in us. Let us be really reminded that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let us remain pure. Let us remain holy. Let us pray for each other. Let us remember all those who ask for our prayers. And in a special way, let us pray for all the mothers, especially the abandoned ones, also going through difficulties and pain, a loss of the beloved, the, the loved ones, etc. The mothers of the broken families, the single mothers, etc., etc. Let all be blessed by the Lord. May experience the mercy of God, the compassion of God. Almighty, our living God, we thank and praise you for the gift of this day as we begin this day, as we are in this day. Continue to bless us, Lord. Continue to live your word in our lives and make impacts in the lives of others. Lord, first of all, help us to look into ourselves, to make the changes within ourselves and to enable us to proclaim you to go out to be with us, Lord. Help us to know you. We know, Lord, that you are there residing in us. We find it very difficult because of our worldly influence, Lord, to open our hearts to you. We still keep waiting you at the door of our hearts, our lives, Lord. Lord give us the grace so that we may open our hearts, we may open our lives so that you may enter in, you may Truly, take control of our lives. Be with us, Mary, our Blessed Mother, intercede for us. Saints and angels, pray for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon us and remain with us forever and ever. Amen. So thank you. God bless you all. Have a nice day. Take care. Have a, enjoy the day. Pray well. Eat well, sleep well, and uh, make a promise, not just in words that I love Jesus, I love our parents, but let it come from our heart. Let us be concerned about one another. Let the love of God remain in us. God bless you all. Have a nice day. Pray for me too. God bless you.